the USA against the Soviet Union. In Olympic-style boxing from the Astro Arena, you'll see a sensational American teenager, Michael Moore, go against the tough Soviet champion, Viktor Yegorov, a rematch from the Goodwill Games. Then another American gold medal prospect, Adam Garland, meets the Soviet champion, Mavel Avetisian. Finally, a rematch between super heavyweight Alex Garcia of the U.S. and Soviet champion Vyacheslav Yakolev, one of the finest boxers in the world. It's the USA USSR Heavyweight Invitational, all today on NBC. Olympic boxing expert Raleigh Schwartz. And in this, the summer of 86, NBC Sports has begun on the road to the Summer Games of 1988 in Seoul, South Korea. Today, we'll be watching some of our finest amateur boxers who are aiming for Olympic gold go against their tough experience counterparts from the Soviet Union. These two sides met up two weeks ago in Sacramento, California, Raleigh. The Soviets were dominant then, winning six of eight bouts. Today, they'll be trying again, will the Americans, to get back in good stead, and they fight with a much different style than their Soviet counterparts. That's true. The Soviets, they have a group of veterans who've been around four, eight, and 12 years. We've got a development team. Our stance will be more or less three quarters, Don, and we'll be shooting fast combinations. We must move on them. We can't stand in front of them. They'll tear us up. We've got to cut off left, cut off right, and throw a lot of punches. Now the Soviets, they'll be in this stance. They'll be a lateral stance that gives them a tremendous advantage of reach, and you must get by this left hand if you're going to win because they're going to pop that right hand right at you off that left hand. One of the feature bouts we'll be seeing this afternoon will feature Alex Garcia of Los Angeles, California, two-time Golden Glover, who is a rising heavyweight star, and he'll go against perhaps the best amateur heavyweight in Europe, Yakolev of the Soviet Union. Ready to begin the card now, let's go to the action. Now fighting in the 178-pound weight division, in the red corner from the Soviet Union, Viktor Yegorov, a very experienced, tough left-hander. He's a brawler, get in and slug all the way. Across from him, from Manesson, Pennsylvania, still in high school, is Michael Moore. A young fighter with great promise against the much more experienced Soviet Yegorov. Fighting in the 178-pound weight class, the referee from Fort, Fort Charles, Louisiana, is Floyd East. There's the bell, three rounds in amateur U.S. Olympic boxing. 20-point must system is the scoring. The one thing you'll notice, Don, is that the Soviet boxers are mostly southpaws. They do not turn them around as we do in the United States. Now, these two gentlemen have met before at the Goodwill Games, and Yigorov in the quarterfinals won a split decision, three to two. Moore tells me he has his number, and he feels like he can win this time. It's in Olympic fighting. The white portion of the glove must strike the opponent for it to be a scoring blow. You can be penalized for hitting with the black portion of the glove. Straight on, strikes are what the three judges score the fight on. Moore has a good ability of slipping a punch. That means bending by the waist and letting the head go left and right. 20-point must system. The winner of the round gets 20 points. The loser, 19 or less. Three scoring blows equal one point. The fighter can lose a point for being cautioned three times. You notice that right hook was illegal thrown by Egorov. It was a wide hook that landed on the palm surface. <laughs> Soviet fighters very often lacking the hand and foot speed of the Americans. The Soviets are so technically sound. Great counter punchers, they capitalize on mistakes. Two weeks ago in Sacramento, the Soviets beat the Americans six to eight bounce. A big left hand scores. Yegorov stunned for the moment. And now, sticking very nicely with the left hand is Michael Moore, the teenager from Manesson, Pennsylvania, outside Pittsburgh. He must get by that right lead of Egorov. Egorov has a good right jab. Remember, he's a southpaw. That right hand leads, and there's a good left hand also by Egorov. And watch how he brings his hands back to the position. There are really precisionists, these Soviet boxers. You can't make any mistake against them. Two left-handers who fought in the Goodwill Games. With Yegorov, the Soviet, winning on a split decision. Good right-hand lead by Michael Moore. These two southpaws have landed a lot of punches in the first round. It's 
a beautiful straight left hand by Moore. He's coming on strong. Bing in the fill up his combination. Showing confidence. Egorov got hit hard enough. He's beginning to drop his right hand, which means he's a sucker for a left lead. Less than 20 seconds to go now in the first round. Three round bout. Down to 10. And we're in the count now in the final five seconds of the first round. And a very active one back after this. The number of his punches, 39%. We're now in round two. And our unofficial score in the round would go to more. There's one Soviet judge, one American judge, and one neutral judge from Canada. They score the fight. This is round two. 178-pound weight division. We're in the red shirt from the Soviet Union. Very excellent and experienced fighter, Viktor Yegorov, against a teenager from Anesson, Pennsylvania, Michael Moore. Now, Yegorov is making a mistake here. As he throws his right jab, watch how he drops his left hand. That means that Moore can throw a hook right over the top and score. Let's see if he does. Close exchange. Snapping those right hand leads. Moore with the reach advantage has been scoring. Moore seems a heavier puncher. He's throwing the sharper blows. And he, every time he throws that right jab, he's snapping Egorov's head straight back. There you saw it. Yegorov came back with the right hand over the top, though. But Moore continues to pile up points, hitting the white portion of the glove on the face of his Soviet counterpart, Yegorov. Beautiful left and right. Right hand lead, snapping into the face of Yegorov. Yegorov is using a body slide to try to get away from that right lead, but he's just... He's being nailed right along with those snappy right jabs by Moore. He's one of our real Olympic hopefuls for 88. Only 18 years old. Look at that protective headgear. That'll slow down the blows. 40% the impact is diminished. That's another safety rules of the Olympic Games. And in 84 years of amateur Olympic boxing in this country, there's never been a fatality. The headgear, a tremendous asset. Tribute that to the great coaches now of, of both nations. Yegorov, the Soviet in the red, bleeding from his mouth, taking those right-hand leads that have been snapped in his face by the American Michael Moore. Moore has a right foot in his nose, and now Yegorov, the Soviet, is staggered. It was Yegorov who beat Moore the goodwill games on a split decision with the American coming back in this rematch. And now an adjustment on the glove of Yegorov is made by the official Floyd East. The big thing with Moore is he's backing up Yegorov, and when you back a Soviet up, you own him. You gotta keep him moving back. There he goes, he's moving them back and scoring effectively. Right hook off the lead, stun Yegorov. Moore, a very stylized fighter, has had a great deal of experience, but tremendous natural ability. Very quick combination, scoring to the Soviets, another right lead. Moore's glove, covered with blood now in the white portion from snapping into the face of the Soviet who's bleeding profusely from the nose. Moore must continue to back the Soviet boxer up. That's where they're weak. And if you'll notice carefully, the Soviet boxer is leaking from the nose. Yegorov in the final seconds of the second round, bleeding from the nose and mouth now. Up. Tricky with Riley Schwartz back at the Astro Arena in Houston. Michael Moore, the young American fighter, scoring heavily in that second round. His almost half his 106 blows landed on Yegorov, his Soviet opponent. Yegorov rally pretty well carved up in that second round. He was bleeding badly when he went to his corner. Round three, the final round of this three-round bout. Well, you're seeing two fine southpaws, both men with experience. Moore with a tremendous right jab that'll snap your head. And there's a beautiful one-two by Moore. He's beginning to dominate this bout. He's moving the Soviet back, and that's what you have to do if you're going to win. You can't let them take off on you. Soviet very nearly hitting him with a low blow that was blocked by Moore. The Soviets, though, are very tough in the final round. They're very well-conditioned, experienced fighters. They kick into another gear. They're particularly dangerous in the final three minutes. Go! 
You notice Egorov is starting to bleed again and it's bothering him. He's wiping off his nose. And that is a very annoying situation. Yegorov, the Soviet in red, bleeding from the nose and mouth. Unofficial, we had more. The American, a decisive winner of the first two rounds. As I told you, Yegorov is dropping his right hand, and Moore's left is finding the mark. I'm surprised to see the Soviet this careless. Beautiful left, good leverage left hand by Moore as he scores on the chin of Egorov. A minute and a half to go in the final round, round three. It looks rather like some of Yegorov's punches have lost their sting from all the punishment he's taken. That's just a caution, no points taken away for holding. Soviet bearing in, and Michael Moore, 19 years old from Anessa, Pennsylvania, continues to fire that snapping right-hand lead. Well, look out, world, because we have a real winner in Moore, only 18 years old. Caution for a hit. Under 40 seconds to go now in the final round, round three. Soviet scoring now as the fight wears on here in the third round. Egorov seems to have picked up a lot of steam now. And like all Soviets, they're in tremendous condition. And he's coming on, Egorov. We'll be more back. moore has got to come back. He's got to suck it in and come back. The Soviet knowing he's behind, pressing the fight, and scoring heavily in the late stages of the final round. 15 seconds to go. 10 seconds. So the Soviet comes on strong, but it could be too little too late as Moore was the dominant fighter in the first two rounds. We'll be back with the decision in a moment. Michael Moore, the decision goes to the Soviet, Viktor Yegorov. Despite the fact our NBC Sports counterpunch stats show that Moore landed far more scoring punches during the three rounds. Now let's go to Raleigh Schwartz. Here we are with Young Moore, who lost a split decision. I thought you won it. I thought you won it by three points. I don't understand the judging. Neither do I. I felt that I'd beat him. He came on in the third round, but the first and second, I beat him. I thought I beat him real bad, but I'll box him. You seem to have solved the Soviet style. Well, I'll be, I really believe you'll be ready for 88. Yeah, I think so. That's what I'm shooting for. And I hope that I make the team international boss like this. I'll be ready by the time 88 comes. Do you think that strong flurry could have hurt you in the third round? It could have. Third round, I gave it to him. Right. First and second, I thought I boxed him pretty well. I go along with you. Good luck, young man. We'll see 88 and so on. Well, thank you. Congratulations. So a very disappointing decision for a very rising talent in the American fight scene, 18-year-old Michael Moore of Manesson, Pennsylvania, beaten on the judge's count, although a very questionable decision. He seemed to be the victor. Certainly the decision that well received here in Houston. And now for an explanation of the rules and fine points of scoring in Olympic boxing, let's go to Raleigh Schwartz. With me is the fine United States amateur boxing coach, Roseville Sanders. You've seen him many times. But what we want to talk about now is scoring. There's a lot of confusion about scoring in Olympic-style boxing. But truly it's simple. The first premise is what is the scoring area? Include the ears, the frontal area, and the blow of, down to the belt line must be hip high. The blow must land with the knuckle surface. No blows that come into the side will score for you. It could score against you. Now, let's throw a legal jab, coach. All right, that's a snap. That's a jab. That counts a point. Now, throw a power punch. Boom! That doesn't have any more connotation than the jab. However, throw a little flippy punch. Give them nothing. Take it away from them. Throw a flippy power punch. Give them nothing. It landed on that surface. We use a 20 must system. One point if there's a warning against the boxer. I think you can have a lot of fun scoring this because everything is equal. So let's get the pencil and pad out, 20 must, and let's pick our winner. We'll be back with more of the USA, USSR heavyweight. Now we're ready for a 178 pound light heavyweight bout from the Soviet Union, Manvel Avatizian. From the Soviet Union, 
And the American fighter from Piscataway, New Jersey. A very superior young talent, Adam Garland. Strong contender for Olympic gold in 88. A pure boxer with good punching power. He knocked out the European champion earlier this year in Sweden. Here's our referee, Raleigh. Uh, the referee is a gentleman from Alma Ata in the uh, Republic of Kazakhstan. His name is Boris Tichapisadi. Box. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Here we go now. American fighter Garland in the white uniform. See that looping Soviet style, the right hand lead of Avatizian way out in front. Trying to parry, throw off his American opponent in very quick moves. Americans invariably quicker afoot than their Soviet counterparts. Abatesian is a southpaw with a typical style. Watch how he waves that right hand around. That's his jab, his lead punch. And he tries to set Adam up. Adam's a pretty good puncher, Garland. He hits awfully hard. Well, wow, there's a lot of southpaw leads in the Soviet team. Have they changed some of these guys around or do they come in that way? They never turn them around. They love southpaws over there. There'll be 70% southpaw boxers in the Soviet Union who have 490,000 amateur boxers in their nation. The United States, for instance, only has 30,000. Boxing, one of the number one sports in the Soviet Union. Good right hand by Garland. Drives back Abitizian. Adam Garland from Piscataway, New Jersey. Very Boris, sharp. Boris called a caution there, and that means that the head was down. Adam came in with his head first. The head must be behind the gloves. There was a slap by the Soviet boxer. You could hear it. But I don't think the Soviet rep will ever call it, believe me. Scoring blows are those that strike with the white portion of the glove only. You can be penalized for hitting with the black area of the glove. Head straight on blows. Now, what score in amateur Olympic boxing? Nice double left by the, by Abitizian, the Soviet boxer. Now, Adam fought three months ago in Sweden and scored a knockout for the United States. He can punch. He's dangerous. Coca-Cola, one of the sponsors here, a major sponsor of the Olympic movement since 1928. Adam Garland looking for an opening in the Soviet. Very quick with that left hand, that straight left. Abitizia, typical style, face that right hand, waves it around, then comes over with that left hand. Got a long reach, Adam's got to learn to move side to side on that. 30 seconds to go in round one, a 178 pound light heavyweight division. Final seconds of round one, three rounds. Scored on the 20 point must system, 20 points to the winner, 19 or less to the loser. The NBC counterpunch shows that Abitizian, the Soviet, landed many more punches in the first round than did Garland. 17 to 8. Garland is doing the thing. Garland's doing the thing that I really feel he shouldn't be doing. He's walking straight in. You've got to move in side to side. You've got to angulate your, your shots, particularly against the style of this Soviet with the long right-hand lead. That's a good right cross. Now, Garland must continue to pursue. You cannot sit back and wait. Now, if you heard, listen to the corner in between rounds, they kept saying, push him back, be first, get after him, stay on top, and punch when you're up there. And that's what he's doing now, and doing it successfully. Avatizian, the Soviet, won't be 25 years old until next week, and he's listed as having 10 years fighting experience. His occupation is listed as teacher. <laughs> They're all physical education majors around the boxing team, <laughs> Don. <laughs> Some of them even fight full-time. I should explain the judging setup. We have one judge from the United States, one judge from the Soviet Union, and we have a Canadian by the name of Bert Lowe, who really probably is calling the shot. Bert gave the, the first bout to the uh, Soviet Union, and I couldn't believe that. Yeah. 
Abateezian very quick with that straight left hand off the right hand lead. Abateezian rally, the classic Soviet fighter in the way he's stylized. This is exactly what I was talking about. Here's a classic example of the difference in style. Here we have Garland facing him almost square on. We have Abateezian over there with the long angulation. Dang. But there's the best Big right hand. Punch. Big right hand, Don. And it, and it shook Abateezian up. Abateezian caught flush. Straight right by Adam Garland of the United States. He must follow that up if he's going to win. He must stay on top. This is round two of this three-round bout at the Astro Arena in Houston, Texas. Oh, another whack. I mean, a straight right hand that beat Abitizian and another right hand that's beating Abitizian to and he's caution. A little under 30 seconds to go in round two of this three-round bout. Another attribute of almost all the Soviet fighters. They can take a big hit. And you mentioned, Raleigh, there's 430,000 fighters in the Soviet Union. You've got to be awfully good to make that national team. That's right, and these are the champions. Final seconds of round two. Oh. Now, Raleigh, let's look at that power punching of young Adam Garland of the United States. Let's watch Garland. He feints a left hook, and there's that overhand right against that right lead, a left hook, and that's what I like, swivel punching, always coming back with another blow. The third and final round, 178-pound weight division, Don Quickie with Raleigh Schwartz. The USA versus the USSR. 19-year-old Adam Garland of Piscataway, New Jersey, against a very experienced Soviet fighter, Avatizian. Norris Garland is trying to stay on top. And as Garland, you say, when you back him up, you hold him. He's backing up the Soviet boxer. They're helpless going back. He must continue that, and condition will be the big factor. To do what he has to do, he has to be in fantastic shape. You've been pointing out, Raleigh, the key to attacking the Soviets is to back him up. Staggered Abitizian, but again, he comes back after taking the big wallop. Garland's forward is his ability to take punishment. He can take a good punch and still maintain his strength and come back. He's proven that. That's just a caution. No points taken away. The caution was for bending down and getting the head out there, which could cause a butt. Of course, with these head guards, it does protect these cuts. You don't see cuts anymore, as far as the eye is concerned. Evatesian, working off the right-hand lead, has been coming up with some good left hand straight lefts when he sees a counter opening. Now, I see something I don't like as it relates to the American boxer. His mouth is open, he's and second win, which means he must be tiring. And that's unfortunate. He lost his mouthpiece. Well, if the mouthpiece is out, it should stop the bout. I don't... No, I guess it's in. It's out. They stopped the bout replacing yeah, the mouthpiece. Of course, it. Soviets particularly dangerous again, we say, in the third round. They're very, very well conditioned. Oh, a fast so is Garland. Bangs with the right hand again over the top. Now, Batesian has a habit occasionally, Don, of dropping his left hand. There it is! A right hand right over the top. Don't think that Soviet can't take a punch. Oh, he can take a hit. Hey! Oh, he's down! Let's take a look at that right cross. Beautiful! And now Garland is charging in, trying to get Garland. the job done. Leaving no hope for the Soviet judge. Earlier about Yegorov of the Soviet Union, seemingly far behind Michael Moore of the U.S., had a big third round flurry and somehow got a decision, a very unpopular one, but it doesn't look like Avatizian of the Soviet Union has enough left. Now we await the decision. 
champion of this 178 pound bout will be back right after this now we're ready for the decision in this 178 pound weight division fight the soviet referee ready to raise the hand of the victor a decision two one in the blue corner from Piscataway, New Jersey, considered by U.S. boxing officials as a leading contender for Olympic gold in 88 in South Korea. Shows his stuff here with a right hand straight up the middle and down goes Avatesian, who's taken punches all fight long and finally went down. Let's go to Raleigh Schwartz. Adam, I'm proud of you. That was a magnificent performance against our national champion. How'd you feel boxing that particular style of the Soviets util that they utilized? Well, it took me a while to try to get inside and finally get my right hand off like I wanted to. Other than that, I feel it was a good bout. You know, it's really impossible to me. The Soviet judge voted for the other man, and that was a wide margin, like 60-56. What do you think about that? Well, I have nothing to do with the judges. I'm just in there. I'm the one that judging. Adam, you're looking good. You're ready for the Olympics in 88. Keep up the good work, buddy. Thank you buddy. very much, sir. And now back to Don. Thanks, Raleigh. We'll be back with more of the USA-USSR Heavyweight Boxing Invitational. But first, here in Houston, the much-awaited rematch of Soviet heavyweight champion Vashislav Yakolov against American Alex. The Soviet super heavyweight champion Yakolov, a great fighter against Alex Garcia, rising American talent. They fought a couple of weeks ago, and it was a pretty darn good fight at Sacramento Rally. Now, I've seen Yakolov, and I've seen all the Soviet heavyweights going back to 1960. And to me, he's one of the better heavyweights they've ever had out of that nation, and they've had plenty. He can box. He's very skillful. He's a precisionist. He can take you apart. Garcia has to be in his very best form to stay with this man. Well, we'll see now in the rematch. They're ready to go. Two weeks ago, when the Soviets and the Americans fought in Sacramento, California, Vyacheslav Yakolov, you're looking at him, decision to Alex Garcia of San Fernando, California. Garcia, at 218 pounds, with big, big potential, a two-time Los Angeles Golden Glove champion, ready to try Yakolov again. Elmo Adolf from New Orleans, Louisiana, and a very experienced referee, We'll adjudicate the fight. First off, I'd like to say I've been watching these Soviet heavyweights since 1952, and you're looking at probably the most scientific of them all. He actually beat the great Teofilo Stevenson about six months ago, but in the World Championship, Teo dominated all the way. But this is an, a real sharpshooter. Beautiful boxer, great balance, has a great one-two, control can throw the uppercut. Still, I would say the greatest heavyweight of all times in my book is Teofilo Stevenson. Three times Olympic champion, and he's going for his unprecedented fourth in Korea. This will be something to see with Yakolov and Stevenson there. And Garcia. You have a beautiful kid who's only boxed a couple of years. He's got the courage of a lion. He said, I want that Yakolov again. He lost a close decision a couple of weeks ago to the Soviet boxer, Yakolev. So here we go. Should be a scorcher. They say the key rally for Alex Garcia is to keep that left hand in Yakolov's face. Keep him off balance. Yakolov has pointed out a great technician. You notice the pop, 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 pop. That's Yakolov filling up the points. That's what we did in 1976 with our kids. Sugar Ray Leonard, Howard Davis, Spinks Brothers. We told them, you must get off with those jabs. Fill up the lead, and then the other man, your opponent, will have to fight from desperation. And that's exactly what Yakolov does. There's a nice right hand to the body by Garcia. Carries his hands high. And for a boxer who's only had two years of experience, he's looking good. Come on, come on. Garcia was a great high school football player in California, linebacker. William Blinky Rodriguez. Blinky Rodriguez, his coach, is looking at a very emotional young man. Yakolov, so Soviet champion, as Riley pointed out, earlier this year beat the great Teofio Stevenson of Cuba. Stevenson came back and beat him in the world championship, so he is a split with Stevenson in two fights this year. 
Yakolev, like all these Soviet super heavyweights, has great range and size. 6'4", four, 6'4 four and a half, over 220 pounds. Garcia, 6'2", 6'2 and a half, 218 pounds. Let's just listen. Let's just listen to the pop, pop, pop. That's the way uh, Yakolov works. He keeps that jab pop. Let's, let's see if we can hear it. Double, triple, triple. 20 seconds to go in round one. Go back off, bro. Make the right. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Right, the count to the end of round one as both fighters staying at range, firing with left hands through the first round. Blue corner where Alex Garcia is being counseled by his trainer, William Blinky Rodriguez. A little bit. You got to turn the heat down, bro. Yeah. That round could have went either way, okay? You, you can't be waiting on this boy, bro. You seen the last fight, right? Remember the last fight on TV, bro? What'd you do? You let this dude get off on you, didn't you? Didn't you, bro? Start doubling up on the jab and throw in the right hand and come back with the hook. You got to throw combos, bro. You're not even tired, man. Take a deep breath. Come on, bro. We got to take it all the way home, huh? This is your second chance, brother. You can beat this guy. Now Rodriguez is telling his charge. Now the one thing you have to do is move in. Move in with that jab. They'll follow it up with the right hand. Come back with a left hook. Good advice. But it's very important you only tell him one thought. Otherwise, he'll be mixed up. He's in against a very master technician in Yakolev of the Soviet Union. And he can bang the big guy from the Soviet Union. Counterpunch stats show that the Soviet had about 26% punches landed in the first round. He's ahead in points. Garcia's what a tough guy, though. Garcia's 24 years old, and now Raleigh blood flowing from his right nostril. Well, that's a change because the last bout was Garcia who had blood flowing from his nostril. He's leading now. No. Yakolov, he's a precision. See that jab go in, right hand high, stop the counter, moves beautifully. Perfect balance. Pop, pop, pop goes that left hand. Low and high. Couple of quick left hands. That's Down and up. That's Adolf telling Rodriguez he cannot talk in the corner during the bout. Against the rule. Yakolev's left hand has scored a lot of strikes to the face of Alex Garcia of the U.S. Yakolov on the ball of his feet. Moves around there like, like the will of the wisp. Moves beautifully. Just, Garcia just can't find the ring. Blinky will not keep quiet, and he'll get another warning. You can call a warning on your box if you don't be quiet. We have an American referee, Elmo Adolf. Elmo's one of our better referees. He's an Olympic-style referee, and he'll work the Olympic Games in Seoul, Korea. So far today... The Soviets have dominated the competition as we come to this final super heavyweight bout. Alex Garcia in the white of the United States. And now the referee, Adolf, is going to have him looked at by a ring physician. Let me, let me some extra gauze down there, please. You have to. Alex seems to have a leaking nose. And what the doctor's looking for is just any deviation of the cartilage. He stopped the bout. If it's just a bloody nose, that's kind of innocuous. The bout will continue. But it's up to the doctor. Come on, bro! Checking to see if he had a broken nose. Yakolov is not only a master at delivering punches, but he parries most everything that comes in. It's hard to hit him. Magnificent boxer. Uses his height, uses his reach. Moves, moves. Left to right, right to left. No pattern to his movement, and that's hard for, the, for a, an opponent to solve. I can go the other way now. Yakolev, unquestionably, would be a contender to wear the world's heavyweight crown were he a professional in this country. Did you notice that inboxing of Yakolev? He had his elbows inside of uh, Garcia, and therefore he could deliver. He scored at least 10 blows on that inboxing. Three-round bout. We're in round two, scored by three judges. On the 20-point must system, three scoring blows. That's a blow struck with the white portion of the glove equals one point. We're under 30 seconds now in round two. Remember, a power blow means only one-third of a blow. A jab can 
equalize the power flow. And that Yakulov is throwing bushels of jabs. Absolutely bushels. Don't wait, bro. Don't wait. Real stylist. Let's listen to that pop, pop, pop of that left hand. Oh, there is a power up by Yakulov. Well, seconds of round two. Alex Garcia still unable to get his game plan working. Let's listen in again. You're standing, you're in the zone, and you're not throwing, man. You're in the zone, and you just got your hands, you're holding them there. And he's right there, you're not, you gotta let your hands go to win these amateur fights. It's not like the pros, bro. You gotta let your hands go. Look, at you're right there in the zone, and you're not throwing nothing. Come back with your hook now. You'll what Rodriguez him. means about the zone is to be in punching it. area. Don't punch from the outside, he's gonna pick you off. Good advice. Yakolev rally is a much more stylized fighter than most of the Soviets. He's very big and rangy and also has great movement, so hard to hit. Unlike most of the Soviet boxers who stand right in front of you and meet you head on, Yakolev has tremendous defensive skills. He'll slip right, he'll slip left. Garcia doesn't really have a target to move into. Now we come to the third and final round of this NBC Sports Special USA USSR Heavyweight Invitational. Yakolev in red, the American Garcia in white. Get off, get off. Yakolev piling up points up. with his long left hand. Alex Garcia trying to get one of his power shots in. He can hit like a mule. He has 90% KO, but he just can't find Yakala. Oh, there's a tremendous body blow. In round two, NBC's counterpunch show that Yakalev landed 50% of his blows, and he threw 74. Landed 37. Garcia only 21%. There you go. There you go. Hey, down. But there's warning a warning again to his coach. That's a caution. No points taken away at this point. But it's pretty hard for Rodriguez, a high-spirited young man, to be quiet there when he sees. Now Adolf's going to wipe him off. Bucks! No amount of coaching can help Garcia hit Yakalov, though. He continues that great movement, dancing to either side. That's what Olympic boxing is all about, skills. And that's where the United States will take these fellas in 88. We teach the skills. These are younger people that we have in there. But in two years, you won't know. It'll be that much better. <laughs> Does Garcia have potential to be a poten an Olympic champion? Oh, definitely. But the thing with Garcia, I don't know if he'll be around for the Olympic Games. He's uh, an older chap. He may go four. pro. It's very difficult to say at this stage of the game. He's got the courage. His basic fundamentals aren't too bad. He's got to learn how to slip more, left to right, right to left. See, in the inboxing, Yakolov has the advantage by pulling his elbows in tight and punching on the inside. One, two, one, two. Since 1928, Coca-Cola has been a sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Movement, a major sponsor of this USA, USSR heavyweight invitational NBC Sports Special. Three. As Yakolev, the Soviet champion, has dominated the first two rounds in a rematch of about with Alex Garcia fought two weeks ago in Sacramento, California, when Yakolov was a decision winner. Less than 30 seconds to go in the fight now. Garcia boxing out of desperation. He knows he has to land the big one to win. He's been outpointed up to this point. And one thing, give Alex credit, he's trying, trying. Yakolev bouncing and popping with that left hand all fight long as we're down to the final seconds now. There's the bell. We'll be back with the decision in a moment. NBC's counterpunch shows that through the three rounds, the final stats for Yakolev, he connected on 45% of the 216 punches he threw dancing and popping with that great left hand and now let's find the decision as we go to the referee ladies and gentlemen the results a decision 3-0 in the red corner 
Vyacheslav Yakovlev, Soviet Union. So Alex Garcia couldn't do it in the rematch. Yakovlev even better than the last time they fought two weeks ago when he also won on unanimous decision. Now let's go back to Raleigh. Thank you. Here we are with Alex Garcia, a man who fought valiantly, bravely. You gave it everything you had, Alex. You fought a master boxer. What are you feeling boxing the Soviet? Oh, I feel good about boxing him. You know, I boxed him twice in the last week. And uh, I knew it was tough and kept his distance from me. So I knew I had to crowd him, throw more punches. And uh, I thought I did better than last week I did. You certainly did. You box well, you box gallantly, and I wish you well. And in 88, I want to see you at the games, because you've got the stuff. And then, believe me, this was a development program, but USA will be ready in 1988. And now back to Don. Thanks, Raleigh. Alex Garcia is only going to get better, but today he was in against one of the great boxers in the world, Yakolev of the Soviet Union, a man who earlier this year defeated the great Cuban three-time gold medal winner, Teofilo Stevenson. Today, it was Yakolev winning the super heavyweight. Soviet experience was the difference in this battle. So that concludes today's eight fight card. Raleigh, the results were disappointing for the Americans. Seven defeats to the Soviets in eight bouts. What do you see though as the potential of these young fighters looking down the road to Seoul in 1988? First of all, I took a team to the Soviet Union the year before the Olympics. We lost nine to two. The following year with Sugar Ray and the Sphinx Brothers and Big John Tate and Howard Davis, we wiped them out. But remember, we lost nine to two. We came back the following year because we got young people. They will mature. They'll be in the Olympic camp. Look out, we'll be ready. You confident off what you've seen of the American program then at this point? I certainly am. Thank you, Raleigh Schwartz, and thank you for being with us. This is Don Crickey. Glad you could be with us at the USA USSR. Spencer Ross and Mike Marley were.